Hello friends, my name is Fandral and today we're going to take a look at the Ice Brute Saga Strikes. This video is the second part of my series on how to survive group content, which is a series aimed to get anyone comfortable in group content in Guild Wars 2. If you missed the first video, make sure to check it out. And before we look at the different strikes, there's a few things you want to know when you're looking for a group. You're gonna be able to find your group in the LFG tool under Strikes tab. And for Icebrood Saga, you'll often see either of two descriptions, IBS Easy 3 or IBS 5. Easy 3 are strikes anyone can do, regardless of experience. And those are the Shiver Peaks Pass, the Voice and Claw of the Fallen, and the third one is called Freyner of the Jormac. IBS 5 adds two strikes, which are the Whisper of Jormac and Bone Skinner. For some of you, this might also be the very first time you will be interacting with squads and commanders through the LFG and there's a few common courtesy rules we want to uphold. Try to join groups appropriate to your experience. This will alleviate a lot of frustrations you might have when looking for a group as a new player and also for commanders who are trying to form their groups. A lot of the time you'll also notice that a group might be looking for specific roles, so if you join those, try to make sure you can at least cover one of them. If a group lists no roles at all, they're probably just looking for anything. On top of that, there are a few things that you want to know that universally apply to any boss in any group content in this game. If you see a break bar, use your crowd control skills. And for all of the Icebrood Saga strikes, it pays off to stack on the group. There will be one exception during Whisper of Jormac, but we'll get to that. And if you've been unlocking your Icebrood Saga Masteries, you'll also get access to a special action key throughout the combat. When you see this, just use it. It deals great damage and it decimates a boss's break bar. Oh, and never start a fight before the commander's ready check finishes. You don't want people to be away from their keyboard at the start of a fight and engaging without a group only will slow down your progress, as you'll want to reset anyway. And with that out of the way, let's dive into the actual strikes and let's start with the easiest of the bunch, the Shiver Peaks Pass. Before you reach the boss's area, there is a bit of a jumping puzzle. As a new player, there is only one thing you need to know. When the first person reaches the boss area, a teleporter for the whole team will activate. This will be indicated by a blue circle with an anchor on the minimap, and as soon as you see this, you can simply double click it to skip the jumping puzzle and teleport to your group. The boss itself is actually no big deal at all, it's more of a punching bag than an actual encounter. Most groups will provide you with stability, so the boss can't even knock you down. And all you need to do is DPS him down as hard as you can, until at some point he will go invulnerable. After this invulnerability drops, you'll get into the second phase, which is pretty much the same. One thing to look out for, sometimes the boss will smash the ground and an AOE shockwave will emanate from that smash, if you can try to jump the shockwave, but that's all you have to worry about. And that's it, just burn the boss down and you'll have your first kill in no time. The second strike we'll take a look at is called the Voice and Claw of the Fallen. These are sometimes referred to as the Coca-Cola Bears in Group Finder and you'll soon find out why. This strike will have you fight two bosses, the Voice of the Fallen and the Claw of the Fallen. Now, before engaging, make sure if you play a Mechanist to stow your mech or if you're a Ranger to stow your pet. And only pull them out when you've reached the boss. If you don't, one of the bosses will jump to your pets and this will make the fight longer for everyone. And when you finally engage, you just want to run towards the Voice of the Fallen, which is the bear wielding a bow as a group. When you reach him, feel free to summon your mech, your pet or whatever minions you're dragging along. The reason, as I mentioned, is simple. The Claw of the Fallen will jump to a random target and if you're all clumped together, he will jump to the group and you can cleave both of them at the same time. The rest of the fight is actually fairly simple. Simply stack on the group, damage the voice until he's around 20 or 30% HP and usually the commander will indicate to swap targets. Just swap your focus to Club of the Fallen after. Ideally, you want to kill both around the same time, but this doesn't always work out that way. If one bear survives longer, he'll jump to the middle, just follow him, burn him down and try to avoid the AoE attacks he's gonna be putting on the ground. 
And that's about it. It sounds more complicated than it is really. So I suggest you just dive in for the first time and go see for yourself. And the final strike of our easy tree is called Frainer of the Jormag. And by now you should know the drill. Run towards the boss and try to stack as tightly as you can with the rest of the group. Stability will once more help you negate most of the mechanics in this fight, but if you see a shockwave, much like in the Shiver Peaks boss, feel free to jump over it. When you're engaging the boss, and once more throughout the fight at a later point, yellow circles will spawn on the ground. Try to avoid those, because if you get hit, you get encased in a block of ice. If this happens, don't sweat it, just mash the number one key and you'll break free in no time. At times during the fight, the boss will be looking at a player and a huge red and yellow arrow will point away he's looking at. This is for a targeted knockdown. If this spawns on you, just try to aim it away from the group. It's more annoying than damaging. In the footage, you might notice our Revenant actually puts down a road for group stability, so we actually completely ignore the mechanic. If you're not sure if a mechanic spawns on you, move your character a bit from the left to the right or back to front for a few seconds. In this case, if the arrow is synced with your movement, you know you're about to get hit and you'll have ample time to step out of the group. The boss itself will eventually turn invulnerable around 70% and when this happens, lay off the attacks until his buff disappears. And the rest of the fight is basically just a DPS race. The only thing you want to know is that when the boss jumps out of the middle, don't follow him and just stay grouped up in the middle. He will eventually jump back to you and you can finish off the fight. And with this out of the way, you're officially ready to join the IBS Easy Tree. I highly recommend you try and jump in the LFG and look for a pug. They're really not that bad and offer great rewards. And if you're feeling comfortable, we can also take a look at the remaining two encounters to round out the so-called IBS-5. The first one is a Whisper of Jormac. And whilst this boss is a step up in difficulty, if you know tree mechanics, you know enough to survive this fight. When this fight starts, the boss will knock everyone up in the air. And you can actually negate the fall damage by gliding for a second. So just hit the spacebar, glide and then jump down. Whereas all of the previous bosses would have a stack 100% of the time, this boss is going to do his best to make us move. When you see a big yellow circle spawn around everyone, you want to spread out so there is no overlap. Conversely, when your teammate gets a glowing green circle, you want to stack. This circle indicates that you want to soak damage together. And the final mechanic to worry about is chains. Three players will get a small indicator displayed above their head before being chained to the boss. If someone stands in their chain or crosses this, it will deal very heavy damage. So if you get chained, make sure to stand as still as possible. And if you need to spread for the circles, move forwards and backwards. Don't move from the left to the right so you don't hit a teammate. And if a teammate has a chain, just make sure you don't run through it. It goes without saying, at this point there's also no perfect stacking with the chains going on, just stand close to each other but not on top of each other. And the boss has two intermissions where you also fight a clone of yourself but these are no big deal, just DPS or CC your clone and you'll get back to the group in no time. One more thing that you might want to know about is that at 25% the boss will spawn huge AoE circles around him and shoot out orbs of ice. When this happens, move away from the middle, as getting hit by all of them will most likely knock you out. When you have a necromancer in the group, they usually negate this mechanic somewhat by putting down a flesh worm in the middle. So when you get to this phase, just move back a little and DPS the boss down for an easy kill. And then finally, we get to the big boy, Bone Skinner. This strike will present you with a real challenge. And especially the first few times, and mainly because the fact that groups choose to DPS and heal through mechanics instead of properly dealing with them. If you play a healer, get ready to push out as much healing per second as you can, as there will be a damaging aura that will put pressure on the health of your group. If you are not a healer, trust that they will take care of you. This is also the fight where stacking on the commander will pay off big time. By now, you should also be hitting that special action key every time you have the opportunity. And this is even more important on Bone Skinner than any of the other strikes. So make sure, when you see the key, prioritize hitting the key. 
The boss itself actually only has two mechanics you really need to worry about. The first one is a yellow cone AoE that deals damage and more importantly will root you. You do not want to stand in this, because being brooded in this fight is a near death sentence. The second mechanic is him spawning small circles underneath each player. If you stay in this, you'll get downed, it's as simple as that. So when they spawn, dodge towards your left. Once you get used to this, you actually won't need to dodge and you can walk over to the left, but as long as you're not comfortable, I suggest you dodge. And just like Freynir, when the boss jumps out of the group, don't follow him. Stay stacked so you can get healed. When he jumps back to the group, a red circle will also start filling the ground. Just dodge near the end of the circle and you'll take no or minimal damage. And that's actually it for this boss. The mechanics are far less forgiving, which is why some groups prefer more experienced players, but once you've done this a couple of times, he's really not that big of a deal anymore. You will also notice that most groups will swap out one DPS for a heal scourge. In the footage, I am playing that role, albeit I'm not that great at it. A heal scourge's job is simple. They provide shields and they will resurrect any downed players who stayed behind in the AoEs. And that's it for this boss, so basically if you manage to stay out of the AoEs, you'll get your first skill. As I already mentioned, you can kill these strike bosses daily and it's worth doing at least the easy tree for the rewards and the time they take. Once you get confident enough in your own abilities and your movement, Whisper of Jormag and Boneskinner are great additions to scale up that difficulty and add them to your daily list. You'll also notice that very often IBS 5 groups will do 10 man dragon stand. This is the same as the public version, but goes much faster with 10 man, so enjoy the free loot. And that's about it for this video. If you have any comments or questions, make sure to leave them down below, or better yet, join our Discord, the link is in the description. And if you liked it, please like this video, and your subscription would mean the world to me.